Hi, thanks for joining me again. My hair's a bit of a mess this morning. Um, but today what I'm going to be doing is building a new, or re rebuilding, I suppose, the uh, firewood storage shed for the main campsite. Um, I never really finished it right. I've just been sort of throwing a tarp over wood uh, and trying to, you know, trying to keep it dry that way, and that doesn't really work. So, um, so I'm building a real thing, but I'm going to do it all out of, um, or almost entirely out of, uh, just older logs, just whole trees, basically. Um, if you remember back in my uh, wood chipping thing, what I said then was that I really don't need to be chipping three inch thick logs in my three inch chipper, which is you know barely possible and kind of a hard work. What I should be doing with three inch logs is building stuff out of them. And so this is one of those projects where I'm gonna build basically at zero cost, just using whole tree trunks from alders that have blown down, although I've had to cut down to make trails and things like that. And uh, scraps and leftover pieces, leftover roofing pieces from uh, from when I built the micro A-frame. I had a bunch of like two, two and a half foot long, uh, maybe three foot long sections of roof left over. So I'm going to use that. Um, and yeah, I'm just sort of making it up as I go along. So it should be fun. Let's see if it works. Here's the micro A-frame. And this I built, what, two years ago? Two and a half years ago? And it has not marked or faded or warped or anything in all of that time. So I'm pretty impressed with that. This is the first thing I ever built on the property, which was much the same sort of principle of just logs stuck in the ground. But maybe if I put just a roof across the top about that height, which is about five feet, that should be plenty. So the, the fire pit's right here, and that's where uh, the firewood gets stacked up. So I think I might just do that better. Basically build that and put a little roof over it, replace these front two lugs, which are obviously too short, maybe put a back on it, uh, and make it you know, a little bit more handsome and uh, a little bit more functional at keeping the wood dry. Still made from lugs, still looks kind of rustic, um, still sort of fits the handmade nature of this campsite. Um, yeah, should be a good solution. So stick around for that. So that's what untreated, I didn't even scrape the bark off, it's just maple. That's been in the ground two and a half years. And it's still completely solid. Like there is no issue with that. And this is in the Pacific Northwest where it rains all the time. Directly into soil. Exposed to the bugs, the elements, etc and it's completely fine. It's still completely intact. So I don't want to get off on another one of my pressure treated lumber <laughs> rents, but this is maple, <laughs> which is supposed to be one of the worst woods for, you know, being outdoors. This is pretty impressive. So I need to go find some, hopefully logs I've already cut up and stacked somewhere uh, that are about eight feet long. So, be right back.
Yeah, that should do nicely. Here's one I had put on the roadside to be part of the barricade for the side of the road, but it's good and straight, solid, and about 10 feet long. <laughs> So this is alder, which is even worse than maple <laughs> uh, for its survival rate in contact with the ground, uh, in contact with just air. Basically it starts to decay the second you cut it. What I'm going to do, I didn't do this before, so that maple had survived in the ground two and a half years uh, without even any gravel in the hole. I just literally just dug a hole with a post hole digger in the soil and shoved the maple post into it. And it survived perfectly fine, 100% intact for uh, two and a half years. So I'm really not bothered, but um, these holes are slightly bigger than the posts I've pulled out. So I'm going to have to put something in there. So I'm just going to throw some, uh, some rocks from my little gravel pile in there, which will help with drainage and prolong the longevity of the wood. I found half a bag of, or a quarter of a bag of all-purpose gravel instead. Should be fine. So I'm just going to cut it, put a beam on top, front and back, and then start laying the roofing pieces on top. Should be fun. I just want to see how much I have. So I can build the roof to the size of the materials I have, which isn't a lot. almost seven feet. This is the little uh, 12 inch DeWalt electric chainsaw. Do not recommend it. Super under power. The, uh, when they switch to the flex vault system, the, the 60 volt chainsaws, those are amazing. This little guy, yeah, it's good enough for this. world around it is not level but it feels right like when you're looking at it from the campsite from the fire pit yeah not big
so I don't have a protractor or anything with me so I'm not able to really I'm just gonna eyeball the angle and hope I get it matching on both sides should be good enough all right just need another seven foot what I'm going to do before I screw this one in is I want to put some backboards along here which is um, a fence board but um, it's exactly six feet long and the gap between these posts needs to be roughly six feet long and then I'm going to put a, a piece of one by so I have something good and solid to screw to so before I screw the tops together I want to you know, make sure the verticals are consistent now because this is so warped this three inch screw is barely going to even make it through but if I can squish the uh, drill it through the wood Spark just sort of gives insects a place to hide. Make it 28 inches. So about 28 inches deep. Uh, I'm going to see how it looks with the roof on. I'm going to start fixing this down. I have completely the wrong screws for this. Um, I'm going to be using lath screws, so it's not they're not you know the, the ones with the little watertight seal. So it's not going to be watertight. Um, and I'm going to just put down one piece and then lay them all out uh, to make sure they're parallel and that this whole sort of not square, not level made from logs kind of rustic thing didn't uh, didn't screw me when it comes to putting something that is extremely linear and has to be done extremely precisely like roofs uh, that's where those two the combination of those two things can get a bit tricky but uh, I'm gonna lay it down and see what it looks like Yeah. 
it's very like made from the crap you have lying around which I like because <laughs> I'll show you at the back two of these were cut short so, <laughs> so it doesn't even line up so the ends are a couple inches longer than the uh, than the middle section but it just doesn't matter <laughs> that's funny I chose a spot exactly on top of the uh, lag screw underneath So this first screw I'm going to have to do in a valley just because that's exactly where the, uh, the lag screw is underneath there so I'll switch to the peaks right here and then go every other one. Also I just accidentally did exactly what you're supposed to do which is to have the seams facing away from the prevailing wind. The prevailing wind will be coming from this direction so it'll be, uh, be good less likely to rip off. going in the valley here as well just to sort of shore things up a little bit since this is the prevailing wind edge I, uh, I don't want it to get pulled out this last piece definitely didn't line up shifted that way just a little bit so I need to go and undo a couple of screws from that end and just rotate it just a little bit because I wasn't paying attention. There we go, that's back in line. There it is. Done. happy with that. All right, now I can pull those braces off.
me I love this like just this rustic log thing it's like I don't know you know it's more organic it's it, I'm not gonna say it's like it grew up out of the forest itself but you know it's not two by fours and pressure treated lumber and it's not built to last forever but there's a different school of thought for architecture about sort of basically impermanent architecture that doesn't have to last forever it just has to serve the purpose it needs to serve and then move on and do something else and in the case of all of these bits of alder rather than lying in the forest as just windblown pieces of alder which would probably disappear in five or ten years of just rotting away maybe less so that exact same process will happen in ten years instead <laughs> or ten years from now when this falls down completely the roof that's the only thing that's gonna outlive us all and I do have a problem using plastic out here in the forest but that's the only piece of this that's going to outlive me. So the base structure of this thing isn't particularly solid. It's just more logs lying on the ground, which is fine, keeps the firewood up off the ground, but it's not very level. And before I start piling tons of firewood in here, I want it to be, at least to be able to be flat, you know? that's basically that project done I'm gonna see how it feels in a couple days after the posts have settled um, see if it needs any more rigidity to it right now there's nothing between the front and the back uh, except for the roof the, the roof material itself is the only thing really holding the front and the back in place so I might put a just a cross brace like this just there um, on each side just to give it a little bit more rigidity I would rather do that only if I need to because it'll be the only piece of you know machined lumber in the whole thing except for that backboard which will be hidden by the firewood which I'm going to start stacking now while I'm doing that if you're not a subscriber it'd be brilliant if you could uh, subscribe if you like this kind of thing I'm just going to be building sometimes I'll be building cabins sometimes I'll be building rustic nonsense log things like this sometimes i'll just be doing forestry stuff but uh hopefully i'll keep it interesting and varied i like my life to be interesting and varied so i do lots of different things and i tend to get a bit scatterbrained when i'm doing these kinds of projects so uh, often you'll see an episode that actually took months to film uh, just because I didn't get around to finishing the project and everybody likes a sense of completion So that's how I tend to roll. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up I'm gonna switch to time-lapse uh, and start fetching firewood to stack in here um, I might start swinging an axe because I uh, haven't done that in a while and having some chopped firewood to go in here will certainly save time uh, for when we're out camping rather than having to chop firewood here as we need it So I'm gonna do some of that too, I think but uh, Anyway, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.